What's up, guys? It's James with This Week in Airsoft here, back again with you. And I've got uh, a very special lady with us on the show. Um, you're the first female we've ever had on the show, which says a lot about Airsoft, or maybe it says a lot about This Week in Airsoft. I don't know which one. Um, but she's the lady who who invented the word sladies, as far as I'm concerned. Okay? Um, a new entry in the Webster's Dictionary, Adela Relentless. How are you? How are you? Good, good. Thank you so much for having me on the show. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for coming on. You, you've had a busy, busy year. You've been everywhere three times and twice on Sunday this year. Um, if they said op, you were hopping on a plane or getting in a car, <laughs> you know, and I, I got to commend that because for years this week in Airsoft has been saying, you know, people have to travel to games and you're, you're going above and beyond for somebody who, you know, just stepped, you, you know, you've been playing airsoft for a long time from what I've been told, but you, you, this is your first year, like really seriously diving into the Milson arena. Yep. Very true. <laughs> um, how long have you been playing airsoft? Um, collectively, I have been playing for about five, six years, I want to say. Okay. Um, it's, it didn't really start getting serious for me until the first, like, big announcement of my e-bike sponsorship back in, I want to say, 11. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so seriously taking it, I believe it's been about three years already, going on the fourth. Um, SHOT Show, actually, this year will be the anniversary of my sponsorship with Balkan. So. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I met you first at uh, SHOT Show last year. Yep, yep. you are correct. <laughs> yep, I met you at SHOT Show, and I said, who is this? Who is this beautiful woman? I've seen her somewhere before. And you were there with your uh, with your husband. He's just walking around in the background. You guys have an air. He's your husband, right? Uh, no, actually. <laughs> no, okay. That's yeah. the assumption that I made because I was like, oh, this is her husband. <laughs> you know, this big scary guy. I can't hit on her. So, um, <laughs> um, but he's with KWA, right? Uh, actually, formerly with KWA. Formerly uh, with KWA. Okay, all right. Yeah. He is actually my best friend. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, so... Um, <laughs> Airsoft faux pas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, actually, no, he's uh, formerly with KWA. Um, he's actually one of the original founders of Red Cell as well. Okay. So um, me and him actually kind of go way back into um, just how long we've known each other and everything else, so... Okay, cool. <laughs> Do your research, folks. <laughs> It's Hire right. a private investigator. It's all right. It has been a very big common misconception. So um, I obviously have kind of gotten to the point where I'm just like, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, Red Cell. That's your. That's you guys' team, and uh, you guys kind of go around everywhere. Um, tell us a little about. T tell us a little bit about uh, Red Cell. What's the deal there? Um, Red Cell was actually formed about. About the same time my sponsorship with Falcon began, it was a, uh, about three years ago. Um, we originally were about 10 people strong, but kind of over the years, we kind of just cut down and shrank it to a few more people that can kind of handle the busy schedule that we tend to have just with all of our heavy sponsorships and everything else. So um, team-wise, it's a very, very strong team. I mean, we have so many responsibilities just kind of due to all the level of sponsorships that we've kind of obtained throughout the past couple of years. So... Um, we get along really well. We're super strong. I mean, we, we love pretty much everything that we do. So, I mean, you can't complain. I couldn't ask for a better team. <laughs> right, right. Would you say that's, I mean, that, that's something I've seen, actually. You have, you have these kind of really new teams that want to build up strength very quickly. And then after, like, year two, you find that the team got whittled down to, like, five core people. And, mm -hmm. you know, those five people are like family, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I, would you say that's uh, – do you, do you find that in your case where it's like you have this small, really super tight-knit group um, that's, like, the most reliable groups, the guys you can travel with, the people you can say, oh, we're going to this op and that guy, and you know they're down. You know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Red Cell, um, even, it's funny because even some of the former members, like, we are still really close to each other. And I mean, regardless of whatever reason they've left the team for, um, a couple people left the team for military purposes. Others kind of left the team to start up their own team. Um, so, I mean, really, there were, there were very different reasons as to why some people left. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, despite that, the team dynamics with each other, like we're super strong. We treat each other like family. I mean, the guys treat me like a little sister. So yeah, I mean, I definitely can't complain. They're always looking out for me. And I mean, the last few events that we've traveled to, um, I've had a few of my Red Sun members with me. Um, little Bear was actually one of the people that got to go to both events with me, Faded and Reindeer Games. And um it's it's been great because even out there like I'll kind of have my moments of like oh my god what am I doing and like the guys are there to calm me down and just be like no it's cool we got this don't worry <laughs> <laughs> so I mean they're they're really great and like I said I really cannot ask for a better team good good excellent excellent that's how it should be um by the way uh, guys if you haven't met Adela or seen her in person she's tiny She's I like am. a tiny little person. And when I met her, I was like, I could just pick her up and just like, you know, hold her. She's so tiny, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's funny because I didn't actually realize like how tiny I come across the people until um, Charlie from G&G &G sent me that screenshot of his view of me from his GoPro. And since it was helmet mounted, I'm like, oh my God, I, now I understand why everybody thinks I look like a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> funny so um that that kind of gave me an insight of why people realize i'm very fun size <laughs> right 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 tiny but a big presence on the airsoft field from everything i've heard you uh you know your stuff and everyone who's everyone who i've talked to who's played with you has had nothing but good things to say oh so that's awesome <laughs> you're definitely definitely you're definitely viewed as a and i think one of the unfortunate stigmas with and and i'll be completely honest with you i've never seen this with any female airsofter Never, but I think one of the unfortunate stigmas that uh, some guys have is that female airsofters are all show and no go and that kind yeah. of thing. I've never seen that, you know. And and I'll be honest with you, I'm out on the East Coast, so I'm in Maryland, so we have some female airsofters, but they're not in the media like you guys, like you and Leah and stuff like that. So you don't really see them, except you'll see them at ops and stuff like that. And these are like, you know, what I would say would be like. You would never tell these women out here that they were all show and no go. Like, they're hardened, you know, they all like ex-Marine, gunnery sergeant, you know, DIs. You definitely don't want to say anything to these chicks out here. So, oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I actually got a chance to – I actually got to see Cat, uh, uh, Catnip in uh, at faded and it was so funny because i was so impressed by her like she literally came back from a dam and she was just like covered like in this blood and i was like oh i want to be her like, she, <laughs> she was so awesome and i mean everything that i've heard like i unfortunately get, didn't get to play with her because she was on, on ufs but i mean everything that i heard about her like just her reputation was just so legit and i mean it, it really made me feel good to kind of realize that i was like kind of right there with her and just being able to play at the same level as she is i mean she she's awesome and like another one that i really look up to in terms of like females is sisu like she is just off the like chain when it comes to this stuff and I believe she's actually been doing this a lot longer than I have so and she as far as I know has been traveling to a lot of events and stuff so I mean the fact that there are other females out there that can go just as hard like I'm proud to hear that and like when I get the chance to meet them I mean it's such a huge huge thing for me so yeah. it's pretty awesome <laughs> yeah, very cool very cool all right so um I don't want to glaze over this you guys uh if you guys want to find out more about uh, Adela's Reindeer Games time, her fun, check out the Last Ladies episode, episode 12. Okay, she talks about it in depth. Um, but, you know, Reindeer Games, how was it? What was your, if you could give just like a broad, quick brush stroke, what did you think of the game? Oh, I'm sorry. I think it cut out for a yep. second. I think I lost you just a second, and I can hear you, though. Oh, okay. There we go. I got you back. Sweet. Yeah, so what did you think of Rander Games? Oh, man, it was so much fun. Like, I, I almost feel like I can't express in words, like, just how much, like, how much of a different experience it was. I mean, it's funny because it was, from what I was being told, it was one of their smaller games. And I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, in comparison to Faded Giant, it was a little bit smaller. It was um, somewhat a little more simple for the American Nelson guys. But, I mean, just... 
the dynamics of the gameplay like they never fail they literally never fail in putting on such amazing op um unfortunately i couldn't really play all that much saturday because i kind of sprained my ankle um within the first hour of the game which totally sucked um but i got out there the last two hours i kind of spent the day icing my ankle so um i kind of got back out there the last two hours and then i wound up actually playing all day sunday um, really huge mistake, by the way, because my ankle just looked like oh, a Oh, but it's like a balloon, <laughs> probably, right? <laughs> it was pretty bad. Um, so everyone was kind of giving me a hard time about that, because they were just like, I told you not to play. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it was it was a lot of fun. And I mean, even if it was one of the smaller ops, like the American Muslim guys did such a wonderful job on putting it on. I mean, the gameplay was just unbelievable I, I mean as much as it is supposed to be a little more sneaky squirrel missions as people like to tell me i mean it was still a lot of heavy firefight i mean we actually won so yay cost <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it was it was really fantastic and i surprisingly enough the weather wasn't that cold either so it was kind of cool it did start to drizzle a little bit i was kind of hoping we'd actually get to play in the rain but oh well sunshine uh, happened <laughs> hey that's all right I commend uh, I commend them for having a game because most of the most of the other promoters kind of leave this period of the year alone, mm -hmm. you know, um, either because they figure guys aren't going to play or it's too cold, you know. I commend them kind of embracing that kind of milsim spirit because I honestly I love playing in a downpour like that to me is an exciting day at airsoft, you know, <laughs> or like I'd love to play in snow, but out in Maryland it's kind of there's nowhere to play. Like if I want to go to a game, I need to go to Reindeer Games. Or there's one kind of weird rinky game that I didn't go to this weekend that I missed, but I'm not going to get That's a whole other topic. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to find that. But I'd love to play in those kind of really screwed up environments because that's – that, like, it's fun. Like, that, you associate that with that milsim kind of, like, I can go through this weather. I don't care. You know, my yeah. beard will protect me, you know. <laughs> so that's that's really cool. Um, okay, so let's talk about uh, – Let's talk about Slady's Night. What the, what got that started? And guys, if you don't know, check out Slady's Night. It's good. It's the great thing I love about Slady's Night is it's long. People <laughs> people always complain to me because our shows, our videoed podcasts are like an hour and a half long. So I'm so glad that someone is doing something else out there that's that long. That's just like our show. It's like three people jabbering back and forth about airsoft, just talking airsoft because they love airsoft, and that's what I love to see. So tell us about Slady's Night. What got it started? Um, well, actually, it's funny because Slady's Night kind of got its start um, when Lee and I first kind of got introduced to each other. And she was a huge, huge help in, like, pushing this Slady's title. And it's actually funny because uh, Maggiore Soap of DevTech was actually the one that gave us our name. Um, it was funny because we were just kind of on this Facebook forum, and then eventually he started calling us Slady's. And Lee and I both took it, and we ran. And um, I actually approached her with this concept because I was kind of in the flux of kind of looking for content that can be continuous and stable on my YouTube channel. And I approached her with this topic and she actually really was all for it. And she was a full supporter of it, just like she is anything else, like when it comes to this lady's name. And she, we kind of formed this idea of doing this talk show. And I mean, obviously the first few episodes, like we kind of was a very big learning experience for us. And originally we kind of wanted to actually switch YouTube channels back and forth to kind of like promote her channel and my channel and the same thing. But kind of after talking to a few people, we kind of realized it would be better just to kind of keep the stability on one channel just for continuity purposes. And, um, after that, we kind of just took it and ran. I mean, originally it was just supposed to be like a female's point of view in Airsoft because there isn't a lot of that, you know? So um, it kind of was supposed to start off as that. But as we kind of went on with the series, we felt, you know, maybe it would be a better idea to kind of show how these opinions kind of contrast between the guys and girls of the industry. So that's where we kind of started featuring guest stars and things like that on the episodes. And I mean, it wound up actually working out really well. And I haven't really heard anything negative about this ladies show so far. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it, but I mean, she definitely was a huge uh, advocator in helping get that show started. And it's kind of the reason like we try to continue the show working together and everything else, because she was definitely my partner in growing this lady's name. So, I mean, I can't really take all the credit for it. <laughs> hey, no, it's all good. It's all good. I, I like what you guys both do. And I think it's, um, I think it's really important um, that we get, you know, 
more women into airsoft. You know, I think it's really exciting to me that airsoft is becoming because see the thing is that's like an untapped. I don't want to say an untapped market it makes it sound very businessy, but it's. I know a lot of women would enjoy playing airsoft, and mm-hmm. they don't because it's got this kind of boys club stigma. So the more women we have that are do be, being like really progressive and really uh, aggressive about representing airsoft in a fun way, like you and Leah and uh, Aaliyah, the P90 girl, hey. and uh, the the chicks out here on the on the East Coast. Uh, the few that I know who aren't in media, Renee Brothers and a few other people, you know, the more of them that we have do it, the better for the sport. I mean, it's we need airsoft to be embraced, you know, from all angles, you know. Uh, so oh. I, whenever I go to airsoft game and I see a black guy, I'm like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, I completely that's... understand. Although, the, although we're a little more of us now than there are women, so we're doing good. Yeah, we're that growing. is amazing. <laughs> um, it's really funny though because. I actually had a friend that kind of put it in a very specific perspective and I actually never really thought of it that way before, but um, from what he actually told me, like the the big contrasting thing about Leah and myself is that I'm pretty sure as a lot of people know, like I tend to kind of come off as very serious and I mean, I, I have a lot of heavy sponsorships. So, I mean, a lot of the times I kind of look very, well, I'm going to say serious, <laughs> so, um, but it's pretty funny. But um, one of the ways that one of my friends had put it was actually Leah kind of brings out the females that are very cutesy and very just like girly. And still she kind of shows them that side of like, hey, we can be airsoft and girly too. I mean, you don't have to go like full on like guy outfit, you know? And I mean, she brings out that fun side in the females and she she definitely pushes for the whole um female aspect of it and then the way that he put it in terms of me was I kind of bring out the milsome side of females where um it's all about the loadouts the kits showing females like hey we can keep up with these guys you know and I mean I'm not I'm not saying that Leah can't but I mean because she plays just as hard as I do and I mean she's she's very fun to be out there on the field with and it's really funny because when it comes to this kind of stuff like I never really saw it in that perspective where we both kind of bring out the different sides of like different female audiences which is good because I obviously can't do this by myself so having that contrasting difference like it's such a huge help in bringing females into the sport and I know Leah's done a huge job in that I've done my fair share and the other females in airsoft that are starting to get bigger names out there like they're starting to do their part too and I just love seeing this industry start growing and being filled with a little more female touch I guess you can say. (laughs) No I I think I think your friend is right I, I do see that uh yeah, because I think my first impression of you was I saw you in a Vulcan catalog, and it was like, uh, you know, you guys weren't doing an impression, but the first thing that came to my mind was like, these guys are fully kitted out. You know what I mean? I did not see you as like, oh, there's four guys and a female. I was like, there's a team called Red Cell in this catalog, and they are totally kitted out. You know, that's the first thing I thought, you know what I mean? It was very, like, we're, we're door kickers. Like, that was the impression that you get. And you're right, Leah gives you the impression of, like, hey, I love my little pony, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's fun, it's fun. It's not a bad thing, it's a fun thing. And I've met Leah, she's cool as hell. You yes. know, I met her, this, I met her same when I met you at the Spartan booth, when she was still working at Spartan, and she's cool as hell. I mean, I, I she's super fun, Um, you know, but it, it's... You say you're serious, and I get that, but in my mind, I'm like, whenever I see, you're always smiling, you're like, ah, you have that <laughs> smile on your face, you know, so it's yeah. like, it's really cool, it's it's fun, it's it's good, and that's the kind of vibe we need, like, I'm glad that you guys aren't like, you know, uh, you know, uh, I'm a Navy SEAL, you know what I mean, you guys are just like, you're having fun, you're enjoying the game, you're playing for, this, for the love of the sport, you know, that's what Airsoft needs. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I always tell people, too, like, Airsoft is very big companies, never really big communities. So, I mean, one of the biggest things that I really wanted to focus on when I first got introduced to this industry was to try and help grow the community a little more. And it's funny because I always tell people this, too. I mean, especially when I get, like, messages on Facebook or anything like that is, I always tell people, you know, if you ever see me out there, please come say hi to me. Like, I love meeting everybody that kind of pays attention to all my stuff because, I mean, really, like, I I say this all the time and as much and as cheesy as this may sound, I mean, 
I'm very big on, you know, I wouldn't even be where I'm at if it wasn't for you. Like you, if you're not taking time to listen to me, like my opinion's useless, you know? So, I mean, I love meeting everybody that's just been supporting me throughout all of this. And to me, they're more of the importance than I really am. So, I mean, I love, love, love meeting people. So, I mean, as much as I come across serious on the field, I mean, there's a time to be serious and there's a time to just kind of goof off and have fun. So, I mean, I always tell people, hey, you see me, please come say hi. Like, I would love to meet you. <laughs> right, 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 right. Cool, very cool. Um, okay, so tell us about, uh, you did go to Faded Giant. So tell us tell us about Faded Giant. What did you think of that? That was your, you, you said that was one of your first Milsim games, right? Yeah, um, it was actually my first Milsim game of that scale, I guess right. you could say. Um, yeah. I have actually never really attended, like, one of the larger Milsim games, like Lion Claws or American Milsim, up, up until Faded Giant. So um, I was actually really nervous for that event because I didn't really know what to expect going in. And hold but... on, before you say anything else, <laughs> you saying that that was your first Milsim game is like saying... Yeah, I jumped in at 12 feet. It was my first time in the pool, you know? I mean, and, and I know a lot of guys will say there's more intense Milsim experiences out there than Faded Giant, but as the scale goes, Faded Giant's up there. It's not the baby leagues. So to say that was your first Milsim op is kind of, you know, it's kind of daunting. I, I really got to give you credit for saying that's your first Milsim game, okay. you know? Good job. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> I haven't been to one yet, so. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it definitely was the first Nelson op of that level. And I mean, yeah, the rules and the gameplay are just completely different than your normal, just like kind of rogue airsoft op. Um, like there were mind games being played there that you actually would never even really think of. I mean, there was a point where I believe UFS guys were like, no, 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 we're dead. We're your team. Like, we just want to come out. Like, you open that door and they just light you up point blank, you know? I mean, those are the kind of things that take place at that event. And it definitely is a whole new mindset walking into it. And um, luckily enough, I kind of never experienced that stuff firsthand. Like, my stuff kind of was a little more just, like, intense firefight situations. But um in terms of the actual, like, gameplay of that event, yeah, I didn't really know what to expect walking into it. I mean, I kind of knew that it was a whole completely new side of Airsoft, so I was a little bit nervous, but to be honest, as soon as I got there, like, everybody was so welcoming, and I wound up meeting a lot of really cool people. I mean, I got to meet Robo Murray for the first time in person. I mean, not gonna lie, I was kind of fangirling a little bit. I was like, oh my god, it's Robo Murray. <laughs> um, so he was really cool. I got to meet his actual friend, who I'm not sure if wants to be name so I'm going to call him Rick because that's what Robo called him um and then I got to meet like a few other like individual people Kat I kind of got to sort of meet her I mean she was a little bit busy running around catnip but um I definitely got to meet Tim from Red Wolf he was really cool um we kind of had this whole like I now call him a Bertasian so <laughs> yeah that, that is that is my new name for him so if you ever see Red Wolf Tim feel free to call him a Bertasian um yeah so I got to meet him and he he was really cool I totally love his British accent um but yeah other than that I mean gameplay wise like they they literally make you feel very confident like from the moment that you're about to start that game like you know exactly what's going on you know who your XO is you know who your squad leader is I mean you know exactly what kind of uniforms to wear I mean there really isn't anything that can kind of go wrong at that event. I mean, when it comes to the player knowledge, I mean, I haven't had a, I didn't have a single issue there. I mean, I know there's obviously the few intense fights that people get into, but that kind of comes along with every airsoft game. But um, gameplay wise, yeah, you know exactly what you're doing right off the bat. Like even for a first time event, like I felt confident by the time I left there, you know, and I couldn't wait for reindeer games and I'm pretty much scheduled to go to every single one of their events for 2015. So I'm pretty excited for that. <laughs> Very cool. I'm, I'm going to hopefully get out to that game in uh, New Mexico that promises to be pretty awesome. Oh, so nice. <laughs> hopefully I will meet you out there again. And that, that, that game is going to look, that looks, I saw the facility and it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to go to Fitty Giant this year, but the game in the mall was the same weekend, and I went to that one, the Lion Claws one in the mall. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but uh, no, that's good. That's that's very good. I'm glad you had a good time. I'm glad you liked it, and uh, that's really good that you're saying that because for, I think, a lot of women, it's, you know, it's okay to go to, a, like, one of those games. That's, like, a super high-level game. You know ah. what I mean? That ranks right up. There. I think the only next thing you could do is – and we've interviewed some of these guys would be like 
Black Sheep, which would be probably the next level up from that. And then, like, you know, some of the more boutique Milsim experiences, Milsim West, Raptor Tactical, blah, 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 and blah. You know what I mean? So um, that's, like, at the big level, the big, you know, kind of level, that's, like, a super high-level map. Um, I mean, game. So uh, it's the athleticism it takes, man, running around that facility, oy vey. I've heard, like, uh -huh. nightmares, man. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, there was it was pretty funny because there was an incident on Saturday where one of my teammates, um, actually, Bo, um, kind of forgot one of the pieces to complete one of our objectives. And one of my teammates actually had to go run up there, um, take a laptop with him and run it up to Bo. It took him about an hour to get it done, but he did it. <laughs> so wow. yeah. that was pretty insane. And like when I heard about it, I was like, by himself? Like, really? <laughs> So it was it was pretty impressive. I mean, like he definitely aired hard that weekend, and I was so shocked by like the amount of just like God. <laughs> like, I, I, like, I almost have like no words for it. <laughs> Cali people just like coin phrases. Like you're like he aired hard. I've never heard yeah. that before, but I am gonna use it like crazy. That's I actually, love it. That's my thing. I actually tell people I don't air soft. I air hard. So I air hard. I like that. I like that. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, so um, I want to talk to you about Vulcan, but let me ask you one last question um, about ops. So, so for next year, like you're gonna do more AMS. Is there any like other promoters that you would like to do, or maybe you say, you know, I want to get to a level where I can do this, or you know, local stuff or a field you want to try, anything like that for next year? Um, well, actually, it's funny that you mentioned them earlier, um, but the guys from Black Sheep, I believe um, Gator Bones, actually had invited me out personally to kind of play alongside them um, for the Black Sheep coming up this year. But the only problem I'm kind of having is it's a little difficult to kind of convince my sponsors to send me out there when it's not really an event that they're sponsoring. So. Is it Louisiana? Uh, yes, it's actually about, I believe it's the same AO as, I want to say, Ironclad. Yeah, yeah Camp, Camp Shelby. I'm, yeah, I'm Camp going to Shelby. that one. Yep. So yeah. I believe it's the same AO as Ironclad, but um, they actually invited me out personally, and I was talking to um, uh, Gates, and he actually, I've been talking to him a lot, and I feel kind of bad that I can't make it out there because I've heard a lot of really good things about their ops, and I... Um, I would actually love the chance to experience it someday. Unfortunately, I don't think I can make it out to this one because I think it might be the weekend of SHOT Show. It's either the weekend of or the weekend right after SHOT mm -hmm. Show. Yeah. So it's a, little, it's a little more difficult to kind of convince my sponsors of that when SHOT Show is like shows, yeah. 40. So, um, but I'm kind of hoping I'll be able to attend one of their games one day because I've heard a lot of really good things about it. And um I believe the only other one that I think I'm looking forward to is Milsom West. Um, as far as I know, they have an event coming up uh, February of 2015, and that's actually going to be local in California. So I saw Jet's video, and that was like, we've talked to Milsom West before we've had them on the show, um, like last year. Uh, when nobody knew about them and they were just in some guys in, in Washington state running around shooting blank fire guns, we were like, okay, we had them on the show. We thought they're doing what they were doing is awesome. And, uh, then, but Jet's video, Jet has this gift of like taking an obscure thing that you know is there, but he takes it and like shapes it into this beautiful story. He's yeah. like the Biggie Smalls of Airsoft. You know, he <laughs> creates this lyrical story of, of video and so his video is great, you know. His video is really great, so it, it's really exciting. Um, yeah, if you uh, what's that? What's that game called in February? Do you know? Um, I believe it's Road to Rostov, Rostova, or something. It's something okay. like that. I mean, that but, sounds uh, familiar. Yeah, I am sorry. I don't know the exact name. No, that's fine. That's fine. Road to something. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, I believe it's an e-bike title sponsored event. So, okay. um, air Splat is actually going to be the one sending me out to that one. So okay. that's going to be a little interesting. <laughs> okay. All right. That game looks, they, they look uh, pretty hardcore. So that should be a good one. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So right. it'll be a good 2015 year for me. <laughs> right, right, right. We got to get you out to a, uh, we got to get you out to the East coast to do some lion claws, you know? 
Yeah, um, actually, um, I'm, I really do want to kind of try a couple Lion Claw games. I mean, I hear the community is a little bit different, so I kind of want to see the comparison. Um, so I'm kind of hoping I'll be able to kind of drop into the Lion Claw um, scene uh, pretty soon. But, I mean, you never really know. I mean, right. it just kind of depends. And as for a couple fields out there, I mean, I know I want to visit um, Iron Sights, I believe is one of them, which I believe is located in Louisiana. And then definitely Balahack is the other one. Oh, so. Balahack is beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's about an hour away from my mom's house. So I'll be down there when they finish the new the new field rebuild uh, in January or February probably. I can't wait to go there. That's a great field. Yeah, I actually um I'm friends with one of the guys that actually helped build the original Balahack field. So I'm pretty excited. Like he's told me some really good things about that field and like the stuff that they went through in building it and so I'm like I would love to be able to play there sometime. I mean, it would be awesome. Yeah, no, that's an awesome field, definitely. All right, so so let's talk about Valken. Valken is your uh, I know you're sponsored by a few groups, but Valken is one of your one of your bigger sponsors, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so tell me because you believe for for whatever reason you don't hear a lot about the V12 engine, right? But it's super competitive. Um, people are using it on the DL and not telling anyone. People are like that's a Polar Star. Oh yeah, okay, it's Polar Star, <laughs> but it's actually a a V12. So. So tell me about the V12, you know, what's the deal, you know, um, what are the secrets? How can I get one for $50? You know, I know that's not possible, but you know, <laughs> tell me what, tell me what, tell me what you can tell me here. Um, okay. Well, Valken is very, very good at kind of just coming out of nowhere. I mean, that's one of the things I loved about my sponsors is like, it's funny because I know all of the insider stuff with Valken and, um, unfortunately a lot of it, obviously I cannot say just right. And the right, Apexes, but I mean, it's really funny, but they're really, really good at kind of working on stuff low key. And then just out of nowhere, they'll just be like, bam, in your Yeah, they face. just drop it on you. They just drop <laughs> it on you. It's like this, they ninja this product out into the market. Uh -huh. And people are like, whoa, where did this come from? Yeah, I think Vulcan, I they, yeah, Vulcan makes the Inakatsu Thunderbees now, right? Yep, yeah, they make Thunderbees, BBs, green yeah. gas, bump helmets. I, mean, I went to my local store and I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> you know, I was like, what is this? Yeah, and, and, and I got this there. I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, Vulcan makes green gas? What the hell? Yeah, yeah it's crazy, man. They just make, they kind of get in, they, 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 I mean, I guess that's a power of a big company, right? Mm -hmm. They're a big paintball company, and they see Airsoft's growing, so they can kind of get into the market really fast, really hard, oh, and yeah. in an aggressive way. Um, for guys, for big guys like me, and I'm not plugging Vulcan, I don't get any money from Vulcan, I'm just telling you how it is, Vulcan makes uh, combat shirts in mm -hmm. my size, which I think is nice. awesome. <laughs> and pants, which is awesome. Because it's impossible. Like, for me to buy a pair of True Specs costs $157. Oof. You know, I have $157 pair of uh, True Spec Extremes. <laughs> so, you know. Uh, but but uh, what's the how, the... how long How's the V12 engine doing? Um, Actually, I've been hearing a lot of... Oops, sorry. <laughs> I've been hearing a lot of really great things about the V12. I'm just from other people's opinion. Um... One of the biggest things I think I am actually allowed to say, if I'm not, sorry guys, um, but um, one of the biggest things that I think I was so proud about the V12 is it does actually fit in a KWA gun, which is very rare for the HPA systems to actually right, do. Right, absolutely. Um, for obviously those of you that don't know, KWA tends to, I mean, somewhat of their process is they'll build internals and they'll, they'll build a body around it. So that's why a lot, of the gun, um, a lot of the gun parts are very proprietary with only KWA parts. Um, so it's very difficult to kind of take something like an HPA system and drop it into a KWA gun. But in this case, the V12 was actually designed so that way it can drop into just about any version 2 gearbox system um, type gun. So um, with the V12, that's definitely one of its highlight features. Um, obviously, it has the different nozzle selections and things like that. Um, I actually got my V12 uh, about a month ago, I want to say. Um, it was after Faded Giant. I saw um, on Instagram. Yep, yeah, I blew that thing <laughs> up. And then just recently, I got sponsored by PTS. So um, they actually were kind enough to deck out the V12 in all of those really amazing PTS accessories. So nice. that was really cool. Um, 
But other than that, the V12 itself is actually a really, really good system. It's been super reliable for me. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, Josh was actually kind enough to put a miracle barrel in there for me. So this thing at this point is just literally a laser. It's just pew, pew, pew. <laughs> so um, he's also shown me quite a few trigger mods that you guys can actually do. So, I mean, if you guys want to check those out for the, the, the Valken V12 system, um, it's actually really, really cool. Like the first time I tried out my V12, I literally walked up to Josh and said, this is like cheating. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. And after that trigger mod, um, the game is pretty much over before it even starts. <laughs> so, right. And um, you say Josh, you're talking Falcon Josh. Josh, yep. Josh first, first fire he's industries. Airsoft. <laughs> yeah. He's been everywhere, everywhere in airsoft. Yeah. Right. So, so. It's been pretty cool, but I mean, other than that, I definitely would suggest that you guys pick one up, try it for yourself, and kind of just get your own opinion about it. I mean, a lot of people are obviously going to be like, well, she's super biased. She's sponsored by them. Right, so, right. Um, no, I actually I, I actually am very big on, you know, you guys should go out there and try one. I mean, even if you can't, like, buy one, at least if you know somebody who has one, give it a shot, you know? I mean, it's definitely worth a try, at least, and kind of figure out what you yourself like and don't like about it, and... You know, if you want, even let me know. <laughs> All right, cool. Very cool. All right, so let's talk. Uh, I'm not going to hold you up too much longer. Get this one last question in here. And uh, I'm going to try to be like you guys, like like Slady's Night. You guys have those little rapid-fire questions, which I think is awesome. It puts the <laughs> cap on the whole conversation, and it's like – it's like it, it kind of brings you back to the to the to the reality. It's like, hey, this is a talk show. <laughs> We've got these questions we ask all our guests. You know, I think that's really cool. So uh, I'm not gonna do all that because you know I just saw it. But uh, <laughs> I will uh, ask you this one question: What piece of gear, what piece of kit, can you not live without? It goes with you to every game, uh, and every every op, every local, whatever. You always have it with you. What piece of kit is that? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, I guess I would probably say it's my gun. <laughs> you know, right. I mean, like I literally cannot play the game without it. Um, so I would probably have to say that would be it. I think secondary to that would probably be my chest rig. I mean, I love that thing. I am. Um, I have most recently become a gear whore. I guess you can say. Um, that's but what happens. I know, right? I mean, especially when you start going to these things, people are just like, oh, you now have to get this. I'm like, yeah. but I just bought camo. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. Yeah, so, um, but definitely my gun. I mean, that is, I. it's funny because the one thing I love about Airsoft, and not a lot of people know this, is um, I actually enjoy putting together kits and loadouts. So when I get the chance to actually sit there and kind of tinker with all the different pouches and see where I like to place things and stuff like that. And it's the same thing with my gun accessories. I like to kind of play around with my guns. I mean, for those of you that know me really well, I mean, I obviously have three MP7s laying around. All of them are very specific models and different things have been done to them. And I like to kind of just mess around and tinker and see what kind of new loadout I come up with next. So really, it would definitely have to be my gun and then followed by my chest rig. So, <laughs> okay. all right, cool. Is it always a when you tinker? Is it always the search for higher efficiency, faster speeds, um, quicker draws, or better response time? Like, what what's the goal? Um, a lot of the times, it's kind of just whatever I feel is kind of necessary with the gun. I mean, right. um, that ten MP7 that I have that um, you guys have seen in some of my original e bike pictures. Um, there was a uh, like, that one is just basically looks, to be honest. Like, everything in that is just stock, so I just kind of wanted a really cool-looking MP7. Um, my primary MP7, the black one that you guys see in a lot of my photos, is um, that one is actually a very painful MP7. <laughs> um, basically, just, <laughs> you do not want to be on the receiving end of that. <laughs> so um, that one is definitely a hard hitter, and it, it definitely has a lot of further range than the normal MP7. Um, we actually, I actually had one of my really good tech friends deck it out and kind of give me suggestions on how I can kind of make it a little bit more powerful and a little bit harder of a... A little bit of a harder hitter. Um, and then my third MP7 is actually just stock. So it's just kind of my backup gun in case something goes down or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, so it really just kind of depends on what I'm looking to do with the gun. I mean, like with the HPA system right now, I'm actually still kind of learning a little bit about it, to be honest. Um, I, I, this is actually my first ever HPA gun. 
So it definitely turned a new light for me on that system. But with that one, I'm actually just kind of looking for the stability in terms of like the feeding and stuff like that. So, and Josh has been really great about teaching me a lot about it. And I mean, after putting that miracle in that, like the miracle barrel in there, I'm just kind of like, Oh, okay, it's done. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah, I mean, it just kind of depends on what I'm going for. And um, I guess it's purpose you can say. So, I mean, if it's a Milsom specific gun, then I mean, there are obviously certain things I kind of do to it. So just right. depends. Okay. All right. Cool. I I like that. I like that. I I, I like that. You, it's like you, it's like you're like a like a sniper. You know, you you got you got this gun. This is my you know thousand yard gun. This it's sighted in. Don't fuck with my sights. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Don't 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 touch my sights, boy. You know I got you. Yeah. I, I respect that. No, um, it's pretty funny because I actually have a joke with one of my friends. Um, his patches are off limits. My guns are off limits. That's the rule. <laughs> there we go. Patch, you don't touch my guns. We're good. We'll get along great. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Cool. 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 Um, all right. So uh, I'm looking at my list here. I think we covered most of the questions here. I wanted to ask. So um, I appreciate having you on, Adela. Thank you so much. You've added to this week in airsoft. This is this is a great episode, and I'm glad you were able to come on and talk with us. I hope to have you back on. Anytime you have anything going on, let us know. Um, you know, I, we want to support anybody doing something positive in the airsoft community. So I really, really appreciate having you. Oh, no problem. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks to everybody who watches the show. <laughs> All right. Outstanding. All right, guys, I'm James with This Week in Airsoft. And for myself and Adela Relentless, we are out. Bye. <laughs> Putting some of them on our mortar rounds so that you could hear when a rocket impacted next to you. Um, the M805 was... The long and short of it, it was a hacked point paint grenade. It had about two ounces of water, about a shot glass worth of water and 200 BBs injected into a latex um, body. So when you threw it, the end popped off and it would spray BBs all over the place, kind of like a water rocket without fins, but with very little water, so you really didn't get wet. Never really caught on in the United States. There was, for a while, we were...